Hi guys, my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my channel, Empower In. This is the video complement to the book, How to Succeed in Nursing School, which I wrote a few years ago. The reason why I decided to make a video companion is basically there's a few concepts in the book that I felt like needed to have a little bit more elaboration. So that's what we're going to do in this video program. Before we start with this video program, I want to tell you a little, a little bit about where I came from. Basically, I started nursing school in 2008. And prior to starting nursing school, I developed a few study techniques that I used that helped me get really good grades in all of my science classes. So a lot of those techniques are going to be brought over into this program and I'm going to show you how I did that because it's basically 90% of how I studied for nursing school. In addition, um, I added a few things, but that is 90% of what I did and how I was successful. So basically what happened was I went to a school, it was um, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, it was called Fayetteville State, it's called Fayetteville State University. And I basically went to the first school that I got accepted to, but I also just really got a, a good feeling from the staff there, and I just really felt like it was the right place. And it's a great school if anybody's in Fayetteville, North Carolina, so you might want to look it up. But basically what happened was I was having a really um, hard time with my nursing classes because I was doing everything that I did for my science classes, and yet I, was, I felt like we were not being tested on the material that we were being given. We were told to read and to study the lectures and stuff like that, but our questions on the exams were all scenario based. So um, it was very difficult to extract the, the concepts from the material and transfer them into these kinds of questions that we were seeing on our nursing exams. So I did struggle greatly throughout my junior year. It was one of the hardest schools, one of the hardest years that I went through. And um, anyways, what happened was when I was in my junior year, when I had basically just started nursing school, there was a senior that came into the, the school and she was kind of just talking to me and talking to a professor and I just happened to be there. And she had just passed the NCLEX examination. So she was kind of sharing her experience and what she had learned. And she asked me, she was like, hey, I still have an NCLEX review book that I'm not going to use anymore, I don't need anymore, do you want it? And so I had no idea what an NCLEX review book was, but I know that if somebody that's successful in something that you want to do and they want to give you something for free, you take it. So I said yes, for sure. Thank you so much. I took this book. I did not open it. I did not open it for months later. So in my particular program, we got off the summer of the junior and senior year. So I did an elective program, which was an externship at Duke University Hospital, and where I worked the night shift. Um, I basically did like nursing assistant skills, but I was paired up with a nurse who, you know, kind of just like held my hand and talked me through a few things and just showed me what it was like to be a nurse. It was a great experience, but what I found was that at nighttime, there was a lot of downtime and I didn't want to lose all of the information that I had learned. So something just told me, I was like, well, I'll just take this NCLEX review book that helped out this senior that already passed. And so what I did was I was like, okay, next semester we're going to start med search. So I'm just going to start reviewing questions on adult med search because that's what the next classes were going to be. So without thinking too much about it, at nighttime when we would have that downtime from about 3 o'clock in the morning to about 5 o'clock in the morning, I would just start reviewing questions. And, you know, if any of the nurses were there, I would ask them, you know, questions about it and we would just have discussions. So when I went back to school, though, without thinking, of, you know, that much about it, we started med search. And after my first exam, my professor came up to me and she's like, what are you doing? Like, what did you do differently? This professor also had me in classes um, that had, we had taken prior. So she noticed a huge, huge, huge change. I basically went from getting an average grade in the class, let's say like above average, like a little bit above average, to basically I got the highest, the highest grade on the next exams. And I continued to get some of the highest grades in most of my classes. So, you know, she was just like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And I basically kind of attributed it to spending time, you know, at the hospital and learning from the hospital, but I just really hadn't realized how powerful the NCLEX questions were until I continued to study. So what I realized was I started just reviewing NCLEX questions right before each exam, and it just had a profound impact on me. So I was using all of the techniques that I used from my studying the science classes and then also adding in class questions and it was basically an unstoppable combination. So that is what I'm going to share with you in this program.
Now, before we start the program, I do need to tell you what supplies I recommend. And I also need to tell you that um, I do have a program that's similar to this. It's called How to Study for Anatomy Physiology. So a lot of the concepts that are in that program, you're going to see here. Because like I said, this is 90% of what I did while studying for nursing classes. The final 10% is basically adding in clicks questions, but you have to do all of these things strategically. Before we get started though, I want to tell you some of the supplies that I think um, you will need to be successful in nursing school. One of the first things that you will need is a good um, audio recorder. Now I'm just going to tell you what I use. If you guys have an audio recorder that works for you and it's good quality, then use what you have. I personally use my flip cam. These flip cams are inexpensive, they're about $99. The sound quality is superb and it's easy to transfer the files from your audio recorder to your computer. So these usually only record for about two hours. You can just download the files right to your computer and then you can, and then you can re-listen to your lectures. So this is really priceless because obviously if you can go to class more than once then you'll probably learn a lot more. The next book that I recommend is a book called Pharmacology Made Insanely Easy. This book is written by Loretta Manning and Sylvia Rayfield. This book I just kind of happened to fall upon. My school um, just knew these authors and they got the book for all of us. But the book is really special because they teach pharmacology in a drug class way and they use pictures and stories in order to help you understand the um, major drug classes. So this book really helped me a lot on my NCLEX and it really helped me a lot um, in general through nursing school, especially pharmacology obviously. So I really recommend that book. It's um, almost $40 but it is worth every single penny that you put into it because the book is, is just, it's priceless. The next resource that I recommend is ATI videos. The company is called Assessment Technology Intervention. And basically they have a lot of um, DVDs that you can find on Amazon and basically what you want to do is for prior to each class you want to buy the companion DVD. So you need to know ahead of time which classes you're going to take. So if you're about to start nursing school then you can contact your professors and ask for the syllabuses and order the associate DVDs. Like if you're going to start in med surge, then get the companion DVD for med surge, adult med surge, or pediatrics and stuff like that. You can just go to amazon.com and search ATI nursing DVD. And if you know the specialty, just go ATI nursing um, labor and delivery, ATI nursing adult med surge, or ATI nursing pediatrics. So what you will do with these CDs is, here's what I did. I also purchased a portable DVD player and what I would do is I would listen to this and listen to me, I would listen to this while I was in the car. I would not watch the videos while I was in the car, I would listen to them and then when I had some free time I would actually watch the videos. I really liked these videos because they really focus on very very important things that you need to know as nurses. And I found a lot of the information in the videos very applicable to the questions that we were asked and very applicable to the questions that were on the NCLEX examination. The last resource that I have to recommend is a physical copy of my book, How to Succeed in Nursing School. Now I'm saying physical because nowadays we spend so much time on our computers that, and electronic devices and these devices can be very distracting. So there's just something special about having a physical copy and just reading nice and slow. Now this book is instructional but it's also very motivational because I really feel like you have to have a lot of you know mind power and positive thinking to get through nursing school. So I think it's a great thing just to read. It's a real quick read. It's only about 180 pages and you can keep it at your bedside for some extra motivation but I spent so much time, energy, and effort and love into making this book so please pick up a physical copy of this book. You can find it on Amazon if you just search my full name Caroline Porter Thomas or you can even just search the title How to Succeed in Nursing School. You will find it. Also, if you're a nursing student and you're totally broke, don't worry, I was there too. So I have set it up on my website, it's empowerin.com and you can purchase the book for as little as one penny or whatever you can afford. But it is a digital copy. 
Um, so if you do get the money to actually get a physical copy, then do that, okay? Goal planning is something that I really want you guys to take seriously. Um, when I started nursing school, I had five to ten year goals. And my five to ten year goals is what really kept me going when the going got tough. Nursing school is two years of just like almost torture. And <laughs> I'm not being exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> it's really, really hard. And when you are doing something that you really know is right for you, then you'll just be given a lot of energy. So guys, I still to this day, I have five to 10 year goals and I look at them every single day. I have them on a piece of paper, I have them up in my bathroom, and I look at them all the time. Every New Year's, my husband and I, we sit down and we just, we plan our one year goals, five year goals, and our 10 year goals. And obviously, adjustments are made every single year, but just having that and knowing that I'm working for something that's much greater than what I am right now just really motivates me to do that. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about where you want to see yourself in five years. Where do you want to see yourself in a year? Where do you want to see yourself in 10 years? This is really important to put in writing because this writing is like literally energy and you will just be so impressed at how what you write down does come to be realized. So getting organized in nursing school is obviously very important because you need to be prepared to take on a ton, 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 ton of information. So there's a certain calendar that I recommend. Um, if you can't find exactly this calendar or exactly a calendar like this, then I would recommend finding something that is similar. But I'm going to show you the type of calendar that I like. And just so you guys know, you can find this anywhere. The first calendar that I found like this was from Office Max, and it was about $20. And it's really funny because I just went to Big Lots just the other day to get my 2014 calendar, and I noticed that they had a big section of calendars. And so for $3, I found exactly what I was looking for, and I'm just going to show you what I particularly like in a calendar. I really like when it has a month at a glance. So as you can see, this is the month of January. I'm not sure if you can read that, but if not, don't worry about it. Here's the month of January, and you have a whole month at a glance. What's really important is that you need to be able to look and say, okay, in one week I have an exam on MedSurge. In two days I have a quiz. You need to know exactly what's the most important thing to study at the same, at, at any given point. What I also like about this calendar is that if you flip the page, it has extra room for each date. This is really important because obviously you're going to be very busy. Some things that I recommend keeping track of are your extracurricular activities. For example, whenever you talk to your mom or your dad or your friends, just write a little note. Um, the reason for this is because when you're studying and when you're studying material that is so foreign and so hard, your brain's going to try to think of every excuse to get out of studying. So when your brain says, oh, you haven't talked to your mom, you need to call your mom, or you haven't talked to your friend, you can just say, you know what, I just talked to my friend two days ago. So I'm going to give myself this gift of time and I'm going to push through this uncomfortable period and I'm going to continue studying. So in addition to that, just so you kind of stay somewhat balanced in nursing school, I would also tr keep track of the times that you do go out or you do have a fun time or you do maybe do something special for yourself. I mean, I know in nursing school I really kept it simple. There were so many times when, you know, even just buying little things for myself was really hard because, you know, cash was an issue. So if I did buy something special, I would, you know, keep track of it. And to be honest with you, I still do this to this day and it is a priceless gift to myself because it just helps me remember that as much as my brain wants to say that I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that, I can just look at the calendar and say, yes, I am. So the next part of the program is basically how I studied um, for most of my prerequisite classes. So if you guys don't know, um, I was accidentally signed up for anatomy physiology 2 before 1, and I basically had to teach myself 
to take in massive amounts of information. As you know, you guys all know how much information anatomy physiology is. So imagine taking level two before one, which is the physiology part. So um, I basically had to figure out a way to learn a lot of information, a lot of words that I didn't know, a lot of reading, a lot of, you know, just coming from somebody that didn't study that much, I had to basically teach myself how to study. So what I did was I created a method that I use and I did very well in, uh, in anatomy physiology and I'm going to show you the method. Now instead of reinventing the wheel, I'm going to include a video from my anatomy physiology program and I'm going to include a few more videos from that program because I, I really like the program. But um, basically when I say anatomy physiology, just kind of replace that with nursing school because there are a lot of similarities within those classes due to the extreme workload and whatnot. So this is how I tackled all of um, the massive amounts of information. This is how I studied, this is how I read, this is how I pretty much like did everything. So um, watch this video and like I said, just replace that word anatomy physiology with nursing school. Oh yeah, one more thing before you do this process is Basically, if you have not started nursing school yet, try to do the first at least three chapters. Go beyond that if you can. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, contact your school, find out which books you need right away, and do this process immediately. If you already are in nursing school, what you want to do is you want to find out what the next chapters are going to be on the next exams. So you always kind of want to be one step ahead, okay? So let's get started with the process. Hi guys, welcome back to How to Master Anatomy Physiology. So now it's time to get dirty. We're going to sit down and start studying. This is how we do it. We want to look at each chapter as kind of a whole. I know traditionally, and this is what I used to try to do, was I would just try to sit down and start reading. I realized that that was really just not very effective. After about the fourth or fifth paragraph, I would just had no idea what was going on. So, what you want to do is you want to get your subconscious mind involved. You guys are a lot smarter than you think you are. We use about maximum, and this isn't even true, we use maximum maybe 10% of our brains. So there's 90% of our brains that if we use it intelligently, we can actually employ. So we want to ace anatomy physiology, so we need to get that other part of us involved. So here is a great way to do it. And don't worry about understanding things because guys, your, your conscious mind is the one that understands things. But your subconscious mind is actually so powerful that it doesn't have to understand everything in order to grasp it. So here is what we do. We start off. Um, what we need is we need mechanical pencil and actually this one ran out of lead. I always have tons and tons of mechanical pencils around. Um, I never use highlighters because I think highlighters, um, if you highlight something, you can't unhighlight something. So I never recommend the highlighters. However, if you underline something and then you don't think that it's that important, you can always erase. So it just gives you that little safety net. So what you need is, and this is optimal to do before the class starts. So what you have to do is you have to find out which chapters are going to be in this class coming up. So obviously, if you're watching this before you've even started anatomy physiology, I personally would review chapters one through three because usually anatomy physiology tests are over more than one chapter because there's just so much information. So what you wanna do is you want to have your book open, okay? And what you're going to do is now you have to kind of sit with a lot of energy. You want to, I personally, it's kind of weird. I find that if I cross my legs while I'm studying, I'm in a more relaxed mode. And guys, you do not want to be in a relaxed mode for this kind of studying. So, open your legs. And um, grab your pencil, I'll have the chapter open. What you're going to do, the very first step, is you're going to go through and you're going to underline all of the bold words. So you're underlining all the words that are in the bold starting from the beginning of the chapter and going all the way to the end of the chapter. And if you have multiple chapters, you're gonna underline all of the words. So, underline all of the bold words. 
Um, you can underline the chapter headings. Those are included in the bold words. While you are underlining, you are looking at these words so intensely. So sit erect, lots of energy, and look at these words so intensely, like as if your life depended on it. Like you have to get an A or else, I don't know, something really bad's gonna happen. So you are looking at these words, you're underlining them very intensely. But guys, you wanna have a lot of energy and you wanna do this with a lot of speed. This should take you maximum five minutes. I mean, you're literally going to. And you might wanna have one of those like little things you can like put your finger on. Okay, so underline that two to five minutes maximum, okay? So you're underlining and you're looking intensely, just at the bold words. So guys, when you're done with that, you need to get up and stretch. So after you get up and stretch, what are you going to do? You're going to do that exact same step again. You're actually going to do it five times. All you're doing is you're underlining the bold words and you're looking at it intensely and you're doing it for all of the chapters that are assigned. Like I said, if, it, if you haven't started anatomy physiology yet, I would do chapters one through three. The way you keep track of your progress, this is what I did, but for you guys, I've um, included something a little, a little special for you. You want to keep track of your progress, so as I would go, so I would say bold words. And every time I did it, I would put a check. So I did it once, and I'm gonna do it twice, and I'm gonna do it a third time. And I do it all the way up to five times. Then the next step is to underline the bold words again. And then this time also include the definition. So here we go. Here's the bold word. Usually the definition is right behind the word. Although um, sometimes the words carry over and they don't have the definition. Usually they only have the definition the first time the word is introduced. So, what you wanna do is you wanna have a computer right next to you, and you need that computer to be open to dictionary.com. This is very important, look at me while I say this, only dictionary.com. No Facebook, no Google, no, what else? I don't know my space, but you guys use that. Nothing else, only dictionary.com. Because you know what guys, the biggest, kind of thing that we face in our times is too many distractions. So what you need to do is you need to figure out a way to only have dictionary.com on and that's it. Then for the definitions that are not in the book, then you want to write down the definition very small in the book. Guys, this right here, this is your flashcard. In anatomy physiology, this is my take on it, you're going to spend so much time, if you are making flashcards, so much time creating flashcards that you won't even have time to review them. So guys, get in the habit of carrying this around. It'll make you really strong because it's very, very heavy. <laughs> okay? So now we have gone to the next step. So on the sixth time that we are going through these words, we are adding the definition. Like I said, if the de definition is not available, you look it up in dictionary.com, then you write it very small in your book. And I know a lot of um, people have a hard time writing small, but if you have to try to write really small, then you will have to pay a lot of attention to your writing. So I think even if you normally write really big, I think you should try to write the definition really small. If you absolutely have to, you can use a sticky note and put the sticky note there. I don't always recommend that though because the sticky notes can come, you know, they, they cannot stick. Okay? So then you're going to do that how many times? Five times. Okay? So right here we have bold words and the definition. So the next thing that we're going to do is... Oh, and after you finish, maybe not every single time, but maybe at least like, you know, every 
second or third or fourth time, you need to get up and stretch. Because sitting erect and focused for this long, you can become a little fatigued. And just stretching for one minute, two minutes, can just re-energize your body and bring the blood flow back to your brain where you need it. Okay, so the next time you're going to do this, so this is on the 11th time. You're going to underline the bold words. You're going to underline the definitions. This time, you're going to add the diagrams that are in the book. Thankfully, anatomy physiology has tons of diagrams. Thank God, because you know what? All of these things that you're learning in anatomy physiology are quite complex. So the diagrams are very helpful. And so what you want to do is when you get to the diagrams, you want to underline every single word in the diagram. And guys, listen, we're still not trying to understand anything. We are just looking at them very intensely. So we're still, we're going through, we're going really quickly. I'm going to lift my finger. I know that's gross, but you can have like a little sponge next to you. Because guys, speed is the name of the game. Because you know what? Your brain is so intelligent that you don't have to look at things for a very long time. You just have to look at it and you will actually memorize it more than you think is possible. So, that is the next step. Okay, and there is one other thing. Okay, now hopefully you have done all of this before class has started. If not, it's okay. Um, I have another thing, another video that um, is going to be if you don't have a lot of preparation time, which is fine because a little prep goes a long way. But now, after you have done all of these steps, now you go to class. While you're in class, you're going to be very amazed at how much you've actually retained. And so the thing is, the more you see the words, the more you can go past the word recognition phase into the word understanding phase. And then the easier it will be for you also to follow along with class. Because as soon as your instructor says, now we're going to study the cardiovascular system, you're like, I know where that is. It's, it's a lot more exciting for you because you know what's going on. As opposed to, you know, asking what, what page are we on or, you know, looking. You know because you've already been here. So, you want this, you want class to basically be um, just a way to lock in the real definitions to the words and get the instructor's opinion on how to understand the material because you've already looked at the material. Okay, so you're ready for class. Go ahead and go, and I will see you on the next video. Cannot wait until then. Bye. So after you have finished reviewing your book, um, using that process, and keeping track of how many times you've reviewed the book, now it's time to use NCLEX questions. Now guys, I do recommend Mosby's reviews and rationales because they do have a section for nursing fundamentals, which is a little bit hard to find. But um, if you already have an NCLEX review book, just use the one that you have, and hopefully they also have a section for fundamentals. But basically what you want to do is, you want to go to whatever section you're going to be learning about in that NCLEX review book. So let's say if you're in adult med surge, you're going to go to that section. And then you find the specific section. So if you're in adult med surge respiratory system or adult med surge cardiovascular system, then you want to go to the questions related to that exact topic. Now here's the way I reviewed the questions because what I thought about and I was like, okay, well I'm a nursing student, so I don't really know the actual answers to these questions. So as a nursing student, just learning the material, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back of the book 
I'm going to find out all the answers and I'm going to circle all the right answers. And instead of reviewing the questions like a normal person would review them, like just reading the question and trying to find the right answer, I would actually just read the question and read the right answer. And then I would go to the next one, read the question, read the right answer. And then the next one, read the question and read the right answer. That way I could go through literally 100, and qu 100 questions in like less than 10 minutes. And I would do this quickly and tensely. So after that, what I would do is I would actually read the rationales for the wrong reasons as well. And this would be a quick process too because you're basically just going through and reading the rationales as to why the wrong answers were wrong. So you're just basically reading really quickly. But this is like such inter interesting information that you can go through it pretty quickly. But I cannot stress the importance of NCLEX questions and I really cannot stress the importance of reviewing NCLEX questions this way because the information that you get from these um, types of scenario based questions is priceless. Basically think about it like this. You have all of this information to read and in one sentence, like okay so let's take a whole chapter. You're going to have a whole chapter on the cardiovascular system. But there's really only like let's say like there's 20 big things that the, um, the Board of Nursing is really concerned. There are major mistakes that you can make. And with every like topic I find that there are like just maybe like 10 to 20 to 30 like just major things that you could do wrong as a nurse. And those NCLEX questions are basically designed to see if you know what those major mistakes are or there's major things that you need to know are. So um, that's what I really love about the NCLEX questions. And so after you've reviewed the material, then add the NCLEX questions to this in this way and I think this will help you a lot. Now, after you have studied the chapter using the techniques in the video before and you've kept track of your study process, then you reviewed NCLEX questions. Now the next step is to watch the video, the ATI video related to that topic as well. And while you're driving to your class, like, you know, keep in mind that you haven't even gone to class yet. While you're driving to class, you're listening to the ATI associated video. So can you imagine doing all of this before class even started? So I mean, this is just basically how I graduated with honors and how I, you know, did really well in my nursing exams and how I passed the NCLEX in 75 questions because I did all of this groundwork before even going to class. Now while you're at class, it's important to be active and to participate. So I have a video that I'm going to show now and this is the video that I created also for my anatomy physiology program. But like I said, just try to replace in your head anatomy physiology with how to study for nursing school. Okay? Hope you enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to the program. We are talking about mastering anatomy physiology. So. Now that you learned how to do your preparation studying, now it's time to go to class. So you need a few things with you. You need your recorder, audio recorder. You need a mechanical pencil, actually tons of them. These are like life savers. You need notebook, something that you can take notes in, and you need a textbook. Hopefully your instructor also supplies PowerPoints, which are awesome for notes as well, but if she doesn't, you can just use your notebook. And always remember, that our textbooks are also available for notes as well. So, you want to sit in the front of the class. I prefer on the side so that you can get up and stretch. But listen guys, in the front of the classroom there are less distractions. So obviously if you can't sit in the front, sit as close to the front as you can. But you want to be up there because you know what? It's just a known fact that the most motivated, or I wouldn't say most motivated, but the, the people that are not going to distract as much are usually in the back, or usually in the front of the class. Okay, so just make it your point to get a good location. Okay, so make sure, and this is I think a, a thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to, but maybe just because I've been a nurse for so long I, I know that this is so important. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that your body is taken care of before you go to class. Guys, listen, it's not like, you know, an athletic event, but it kind of almost is because you're going to be, you need to have complete focus. You need to have your physical body, like, work with you. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you can't really focus if you're just 
irritated and your body is just like needs to stretch and stuff like that. So what you want to do is you want to do a few things before you sit down for class. First of all, do you have to go to the bathroom? If so, go. The second thing is this. Do you need to, you need to do a quick stretch before you get into class. Just like an, a professional athlete, you need to just stretch. And what I do for added fun is while I'm stretching, I just imagine myself like my favorite professional athlete and I imagine the intensity that they have and I just, you know, imagine that this class is like a game and that I need to like ace it and I need to have full focus. So while I'm stretching, I just think about that because it makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so the other thing is you want to eat a few bites of a snack before you go to class. Guys, I have to say this. I don't want you to ever, 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 never, never, never eat a full meal before you go to class. That is like recipe for disaster. Because as soon as the lecture starts, in like 15 minutes, your belly is going to be so full, all the blood's going to be rushing to that area, your blood's leaving your brain and going to your stomach to digest that cheeseburger you just had. Don't do it. Have a few carrot sticks, have a few nuts. Have something healthy that's going to not take all your energy away. So, have your foods work with you, not against you. So, the other thing is you want to have your notebook open and ready to go. You want to obviously turn the recorder on as soon as your instructor starts speaking. And you want to intensely take notes. And you can take these notes anywhere. You can take it on your notebook, you can take it on your PowerPoint, and you can take it on your textbook. Your textbook is paper waiting to be written on. Because remember, like I mentioned before, we are not reselling that book. That book is ours. We're going to own it and we're going to mark it up with pencil. No highlighter. <laughs> so, throughout the lecture, because of the preparation that you have done, you are going to be so amazed at how you can just stay with the instructor and every time she mentions a word, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I know where that word is. And oh my gosh, I know where that diagram is. Guys, listen, the preparation that you have done is going to allow you to skip the word recognition phase and go straight to understanding the word at much greater detail. And you'll be able to understand what the instructor's explanation of this term or system or diagram is because you already are past the actual word recognition. So guys, you're going to have so much fun in class now. I'm really excited for you. The other thing is you want to, as soon as the instructor says, are there any questions? Just get in the habit. Just do this. Just do it, you know, because the more you are vocal, the more you get involved in the program. I mean, the one thing is getting involved by taking notes that, that'll really keep you active. The other thing is just speaking. Get in the habit of asking questions. I ask tons and tons and tons of questions in anatomy, physiology, chemistry, in nursing classes, all my classes. I can't tell you how many people came up to me after class and was like, thank you so much for asking that question. And of course, I'm thinking, why didn't you ask the question? But I didn't say that. But anyways, they were like, you know, I was, they're just kind of too nervous to ask the questions because they don't want to look stupid. You know what? I don't care if I look stupid because you know what? My grades reflect that I'm not because I'm brave enough to ask questions just like you are. So, I will see you in the next video and I cannot wait. See you soon. Bye. Okay guys, welcome back to How to Master Anatomy Physiology. So we have done um, steps one through three, which is to underline the bold words, underline the bold words and the definition, underline the bold, and then the third one is to underline the bold words, the definition and the diagram. Then we went to class. We took notes in the class and now we are ready to study again. This is our post-class study. So, the first thing that I usually do is I go through steps one through three again. Actually, I'm sorry, I actually just go through the third step again.
Then what I do is I take the notes that I took in class and then I also quickly review those. And guys, again, you're not really trying to focus um, on understanding as much as you are just trying to look at things intensely and just have a piece about you that you will eventually understand everything because you know that you are working on the 90% of your brain. So with the notes, grab your mechanical pencil and you just underline. Look at it intensely, underline, keep looking at it intensely and underline. Okay, so keep on going, keep on underlining and keep on reviewing. So the next thing that you're going to do, and guys, I really need to encourage you to do this. While you are taking anatomy physiology, it is very important that you have a very good mind to work with. So what you want to do is you want to clear your mind of all the clutter that is possible. In order to do that, I have included over 30 musical audios to help remind you of how amazing you are. And I've also included about five audios of just me talking and telling you how I overcame a, a lot of things while I was in class. So guys, if it's possible, just listen to those audios and honestly nothing else. Because I'll tell you why. I want you to do something. I want you to go to the um, internet and Google major events from the year 2005, major news events from the year 2005. And I want you to take a long, hard look at the events that happened that made news. And I want you to ask yourself if your life could have gone on without you knowing those. You'll probably be reminded of a lot of events. So what I want you to do is just turn off the TV. When you're on the online, you have to be very careful. It's very important that you use your mind wisely because you know what? This is all we've got. And if you have a clear mind which is ready to absorb a lot of information, you are so far ahead of the game. So we are listening to our audios. We are reviewing our notes. And guys, when you want to listen to the audios, you want to do that during times when you can't study. So let's say you're brushing your teeth. Let's say you're um, cleaning the house. So guys, just get it into your brain, um, all of these audios that I've created for you. And what I would do while I was in um, anatomy physiology class was I actually had visual reminders. So I would write a lot of quotes everywhere. And... Um, just help remind myself of what I'm capable of. So we have reviewed our notes. We have reviewed the book again because again, our book is our flashcard. Now, guess what time it is? It is time to read. So while you are reading, you are, have your mechanical pencil with you. You are sitting erect with a lot of energy, your legs are not crossed, and you underline. You start from the beginning of the chapter now, and you just underline as you read every sentence. And you want to read quickly, and hopefully by now you understand a little bit more of the information because you have gone past the word recognition phase, you know what most of the words mean, you went to class, and now you are reading. Um, that is really... Hopefully you guys will understand as you go along and you read. And those are the most powerful things that I can teach you about how to study for anatomy physiology. So this is a quick video. Um, the next video we are going to talk about what to do if you literally have no preparation time. No prep time, no problem. I'll tell you how to deal with that. All right, I will see you guys in a bit, minute. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are going to talk about in this video what to do when you have little to no preparation time. So what you will find a few times, um, some, it just depends on the instructor's way of running the class. Sometimes you will not have time to go through all of the steps before class. Um, all of the underlining the bold words, the bold words in the definition, and the bold words definition diagram. But 
you will find that a little preparation goes a long way. So what happens sometimes is sometimes the instructor will give you a test on, you know, a few chapters and then right after that, ex that exam, she's going or he's going to have lecture on the next few chapters. It's not optimal, but it does happen a lot because like I said, anatomy physiology is just so much information. So a little prep time goes a long way. So obviously, let's say you have the test and you finish the test and you are going to, you know, obviously just have a few minutes, but during those few minutes, if you just start the first step, which is to underline the bold words, you will be surprised at how much information that you will actually be able to retain. And guys, your whole main goal um, of doing this is just to go past the word recognition phase. So that way, when you go to class, you can kind of, you know where you are, you know the chapter, you know the feel of the chapter, and then you can actually try to understand the words. So if you get past that, obviously go to the next step, and then optimally, you'll be able to do the bold words, the definitions, and the diagrams. But guys, listen, like I said, you want to um, not stress out about it, you just want to continue um, on with the studying that you're going to be doing and use every second wisely because you know what while everyone's getting ready for class like you know obviously you know how much time it it takes to actually start the class like you know everyone's sitting there the class starts at two but does lecture start at two use every second wisely because you know what if lecture starts at 2.02, that's an extra two minutes that you could be reviewing all of this information. So guys, just get in the habit of using every second wisely because you know what? It's another minute that counts. It's another 30 seconds that counts. Um, do this up until basically the, let the instructor starts talking and then that's when you know it's time to start taking notes. And then just continue with your notes and recording your lectures as usual. All right, I will see you in a bit. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to Mastering Anatomy and Physiology. So now this video is dedicated to approaching your instructors intelligently. You need to spend time with your instructors. You need to plan meetings above and beyond the classrooms I usually try to meet with my instructors at least once per week. Now, until you know their testing strategy, you need to go there with a plan to figure it out. Let me just tell you what a lot of students would do, and I would see them do that because I would be waiting there along with them, waiting for my appointment. And I learned that there are certain things that you never really want to do. The first thing is you never want to go to your instructor and say, how do I study for this class? First of all, it's too broad of a question. How, how do you answer that? I mean, there's so many things that you need to do. As you can see, this is like the ninth or 10th video and we're still talking about, you know, ways to study. So it's just, it's too broad of a question to be answered in a few minutes. The other question, and the other thing is, if you're asking how to study, even though this may not be true, it insinuates that you haven't even started studying. Like I said, that may not be true, but if you're, you're a professor and you're putting a lot of time and effort into creating these classes that are going to help your students move forward, and then somebody comes to you and says, how do I study? Your, pro your first thought's probably gonna be like, you're an adult, you're in college, really? Don't make that mistake because it can be taken a bunch of different ways. What you want to do is you want to prepare for this visit. So what you want to do is go there with six very specific questions and have the questions written down. Now where do you get your six questions from? So what you want to do is you want to choose three questions from the lecturing material, the material that was covered by the instructor in class. The other three questions you want to choose from the book. They could be things that your instructor covered in class or may not have covered in class. So what you want to do is you want to study especially these six things. 
and you want to know a good base knowledge about them. You obviously don't have to know everything about them because you also want to go there with a few questions. But what you want to do is you want to show that you have put time and effort into studying and you are not there to waste their time. You are there for them just to give you quick answers. When your visit starts, go ahead and ask your first question. And then what you're doing is, while the professor's answering your question, you want to see where they get their information from. So if they just verbally tell you the information, then just say, oh, okay, hold on one second, let me go to that page. Where did you find that in the book? Or where did you find that in the PowerPoint slide? So what you're doing is you're learning where they're getting most of their material from. Some instructors will test you directly from the PowerPoints and some will quite literally take questions directly from the book and not use the PowerPoints at all. So you need to know where this professor is going to be grabbing the information from because they're the ones giving you the grade. With each question, you want to watch the answer and obviously it could be a mix of both and that's fine, at least you know that. But you also are getting valuable information and as the professor is giving you the answers to your questions, just remember to keep writing answer, you know, writing the information down. So these visits don't need to take that long, maybe 30 minutes to an hour max. And if you use your time intelligently, you can really get a lot done in this time. Always end the, the session with Thank you so much for your time. Is there any advice you have for me? Is there anything that you know I missed? Or is or you know, this upcoming test, can you give me any advice? Or you know, what do you think would help me move forward? What do you think would help me do really well in this class? And you'll find that the answers are so invaluable, especially with some professors. I mean, some professors will just see how hard you're working and they'll just want to help you and like to give you information and Another thing that I've learned is that since I ask a lot of questions, um, just me going there and asking questions and then knowing that I was one of the top students in the class, they have actually arranged extra study sessions because one of them, one of the professors said, well, if you don't get it, then I know a lot of other people don't get it, so I'm going to have an extra study session for you guys. So a lot can happen during these interactions with your professors and just use it wisely. Alright, I will see you in a bit. Bye! Hi guys, welcome back to Empowering. So excited to have you with me. Um, we're going to go over some motivating tips for your Monday again, and this is specifically on test taking strategies. First, the strategies that I'm going to cover are um, can be used for any classes, like anatomy, physiology, chemistry, stuff like that. And then I'll give you a few tips um, that will be specifically for your nursing questions. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, the first tip that I can give you is to listen to yourself and to do what works for you. And what I'm talking about is I had a lot of professors that were telling me you know, the night before a test or the night before an exam, you need to relax, you need to take a bubble bath, don't study. I had um, one NCLEX review professor tell me that the week before the NCLEX examination not to study. Guys, listen, you have made it this far um, if you know what test taking strategy works for you. For me, I knew that that wasn't going to work for me. So I study up until the very last second. Literally, when I'm in the room waiting for the professor to hand out the exam, I have my notes and my book in front of me and I'm still reviewing. So that's what works for me. So I think that's what would work for most people, honestly. Um, to the, the second tip that we're going to go over is to, um, if you can, have another piece of paper. Um, some professors will allow you to have a scratch paper. If not, you can use your hand. But what you want to do is as soon as you get the test, before you read the question, cover up the answers. Okay, if you are allowed to write on the exam, you can do this next step. If not, you just have to kind of work with it. Um, if you can, underline each word as you read so to make sure you read each question very carefully. These test questions and their answers are really meant to um, confuse you. And the simple twist of one word or another can mean an entirely different thing. So what you want to do is get used to reading every single second. 
Um, I once, I never finished it, but I once took a speed reading course, and throughout the course they taught you that there's certain words that you just never look at, you just read over. And, but this reading over can literally mean the, the night and day as far as the question is concerned. So you want to get in the habit of just underlining every word as you read. If you can't underline, just follow along with your, your finger. Just make sure you're reading every question. At this point, what you want to do is, with the answer still covered up, you want to think about what the possible answer could be. Hopefully you come up with something. If not, think a little bit more, but usually you have something that will come to mind. And just write that down on your scratch paper or on the test directly, or if you have to, keep it in mind. And at this point, this is when you actually look at the test answers. So hopefully something matches up directly. It's always fun when that happens. If not, then just try to look for something that kind of fits along what you thought of. Okay, because this is your best resource. It has all of the answers. You just have to kind of extract it from them. Then what you want to do, if you have a test question that you just have no idea what it is, you just want to mark that and come back to it. But when you're doing that, you want to relax, okay? Because when you don't get the answer to something, it can make you really stressed out, your hands can start sweating, your shoulders can start tensing up, and you're going to be putting yourself in a state where it's even harder to get the answers from. So what you want to do is just take a deep breath in and just do this throughout the test, um, especially maybe like while you're reading the questions, is to make sure you're breathing very calmly, very deeply. And then you just want to mark it and come back to it. And what I want you to do is to understand that there's many times when you will be going on and five questions later, the correct answer will just pop in your head. And it'll happen more often than you think. Um, another thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the information builds on each other um, with anatomy and physiology, with um, nursing questions, a lot of this information just builds. So it is very quite possible that the answer to that question and the answer to other questions can be actually in the test, just disguised in, in the form of another answer or in the form of another question. So just be aware of that. Um, so, okay, and we're, I just want to stress again to take deep breaths throughout the um, questions because you really want to be as relaxed as possible because relaxing is going to allow your brain to come up with the answers. Because honestly, you probably know them. You've just maybe forgotten or, you know, just need to kind of remind yourself of that. So just come back to it. Now these, um, for NCLEX style questions, NCLEX style questions are the type of questions that you're going to be seeing from day one in nursing. If not, then you'll be seeing it very soon. These are scenario questions of situations that as a nurse you will see every day. You guys, I'm a nurse now, I've been a nurse for five years. I see these types of scenarios all day. And um, so they are designed to have you go through real life experiences and to select the best answer out of two, three, possibly four correct answers. There's always one best answer. One thing that you want to focus on is that on the NCLEX examination, you are um, practicing in a perfect world. Staffing's not an issue. Other patients are fine. Um, in fact, maybe you don't have other patients. You just have one patient, and you're focusing on this one, one um, item, which really is kind of a true life scenario, too, because let's just take worst case scenario, and you were put in a court of law. And they're not going to ask you what was going on with all of your other patients. They're going to say and they're going to look at this one patient and what was going on with that one patient. So just putting that out there. You want to um, think as if you have all the time in the world, that you are just focusing on this one thing and that's it. So there are a thing called RN buzzwords and you'll probably hear that a lot in school. And these are things that the RN is only allowed to do. And um, these are things like documenting, calling a doctor, a provider, and I say provider because a lot of times you're working with physician assistants or nurse practitioners. And um, these are things that cannot be delegated that the nurse has to do. So if you see an option that says 
delegate this to the CNA or delegate this to the LP, and that's not correct. Another thing is you always want to look at the ABCs, which is the airway, breathing, and circulation. So if that ever is an option, you may want to consider that because obviously you need to protect the airway first and then the breathing and then the circulation. So if things are life-threatening, you want to deal with those first. There is one exception. If your patient does not have a pulse, your patient is, you know, you found them on the floor, there's no pulse, then the actual, um, the it changes from A, B, C to C, B, no, C, A, B. It's circulation, airway, and then breathing. So it's C, A, B. And that's only when your patient does not have a pulse. Um, so they kind of trip you up with questions like that, too. <laughs> okay. Um, and in the NCLEX, one thing is that you never leave your patient. So if there's an option that says, you know, leave the patient and go do this, that's wrong. You never leave your patient. And that's true. Because if you have an emergent situation, they're going, like the first question anybody's going to ask, the doctor, the um, nursing supervisor, when something's happening, they're like, who's the nurse? Who's the nurse? Because the nurse knows the patient better than anybody else. So um, that you never do leave your patient, even in real life. Most of the questions are multiple choice. And when I say multiple choice, the questions are multiple choice with multiple of the options correct. So you always have to choose the best one. And that's a very difficult way to um, have questions. There is one other type of questions, and it's select all that apply. That's even harder. So <laughs> you have something else to look forward to. However, with the select all that apply questions, um, if I can give you a few tips, usually there's like two, at least two that are correct. Usually you have like five or six options. And usually what I've seen is a lot of times they go over disease processes. So like you'll see um, your patient has pneumonia. What would you expect some signs and symptoms that this patient could be experiencing? And it'll be like select all that apply. And you have to kind of select which ones. Um, in nursing school, this doesn't help, but on the NCLEX examination, these are the hardest types of questions that you can get. So if there's one little peace of mind tip that I can give you, if you're seeing a lot of these select that apply questions, you're doing very well. I, on my NCLEX examination, I remember getting about almost 15 of them. And I knew that that was good, even though these questions were so hard and so stressful, I knew that that was ultimately good because I knew that that must, meant that, I, that must mean that I'm doing well. And so they wouldn't be giving me hard questions um, if I wasn't doing that good. They would have been giving me easier questions. So the other tip that I can give you is, guys, you can start on NCLEX style questions right now, right here. I don't care if you haven't started nursing school yet. I don't care if this is your first day in nursing school. I don't care if this is your second year. You've got to get an NCLEX book. I do personally recommend Mosby's Reviews and Rationales. You can find it on Amazon.com. Guys, they're not paying me. I don't work with them. I just personally like their book. They have the easiest to read um, format. And I also found um, that they have a really rare and hard to find section on nursing fundamentals, which is usually the starting point in nursing school. So I love you guys. I hope you found this helpful. If so please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and write a comment and let me know if this is helping you or if you have any other questions. All right, I love you guys. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye. Okay guys, so after the test, hopefully you did well. Um, so what do you do after the test? So you go out and party all night? No, you don't party all night. You don't party while you're in nursing school. <laughs> nursing school is the equivalent of having no life. So just kind of get used to that. But believe me, it is so worth it when you are working three freaking days a week. Maybe sometimes five, but three days a week. You're going to have four days off to enjoy that with your friends, your family, everybody. So just study as hard as you can now. So what do you do after the test? You find out what the next chapters are going to be. And you start doing the same process as before. You do the bold words, the bold words and the definitions, and then the bold words, definitions, and the diagrams. So you just get started on the next um, material. So you go to your professor. I mean, usually if you the first exams were on chapters one through three, then maybe the next ones would be on chapters four through eight or whatever. 
but just check with your professor and ask what the next chapters are going to be and start the process. Get started. Why not? You already have everything you need right there. So just get started right away. And then you also find out where the next section is going to be in your NCLEX review book. And then you start reviewing the NCLEX questions. So um, there's really just no time in nursing school to waste at all. So you finished one exam, just get started on the next material. You have everything you already need right in front of you. You have your textbooks, you have your ATI videos or whichever videos or DVDs you decided to use, and you have your NCLEX review questions. So it's all right there, all the material that you need. Don't wait for a lecture, just get started right away. So some things that you really need to pay attention to while you are in nursing school is to make sure that you are keeping this little thing between your ears in a positive state. So what I found was that you really have to actively seek for positive information. So um, what I did was I created a bunch of audios for you. Now if you guys are familiar with my anatomy physiology program, you will know that I um, had it in a different format and you guys, once you purchase the thing, were automatically given the audios. I actually uploaded all of the audios onto my SoundCloud. So what you can do is if you just Google SoundCloud.com or if you just go to SoundCloud.com, you will find um, that website. And then once you're on that website, what you want to do is just do a search for Empowerin. So it's E-M-P-O-W-E-R-N. And then you will find my audios. And those audios are basically to help you stay positive and focused. And then what you can do is with your smartphone, you can download the SoundCloud app. And it looks like this. And then once you have the SoundCloud app, you can find me on that. And you will be able to play all of the audios from your phone. So here I am in Power In. And then what you can do is just you hit play on whichever audio you want to hear. And that's it. So, like I said, it's really, really, really important that you put positive information, positive words into your mind. What's also important is that you limit any negative things. So if you have any students that are around you that are really negative, just try to limit your exposure to them. Um, if you have any professors that are really negative, just do whatever you have to do to ace their class, but just not spend any extra time with them. There's people that you have to, you know, work with to get what you need out of life. But that doesn't mean you have to be their best friend. So let me give you a tool that I do whenever I have a day where I make absolutely no progress. Like let's say I had a list of things to do that look something like this and I was not able to check off one thing because I didn't do anything. So what I have found is that when you have a day where you get like nothing done, then the best thing to do is just prepare for a powerful tomorrow. And the way I do that is, first of all for me, I find that a lot of times when I cannot study and I cannot focus, a lot of times my surrounding environment is very cluttered. So what I'll do is I'll just clean up and while I'm cleaning up, I'm mentally preparing myself and I'm mentally thinking about what a good day I'm going to have tomorrow because I'm going to get everything done that I needed to get done today and tomorrow. So um, that's really what I do. Like if I have a day where I'm trying to like create a video or an audio, um, that's what I'll do. I'll put on some positive information. I will even listen to my audios. I actually really like my audios. <laughs> and I will start cleaning the house. And when I look at my desk and it's all clean, I'll look at it and I'll be like, you know what, this is the desk of a very, very successful person. And I go to bed thinking that and I get some rest and I wake up and it's like I'm a different person. So another thing that you want to do is you never want to go to sleep without knowing what your plan of action is for tomorrow. So every day when you wake up and you open your eyes, you need to know exactly what your goals are for that day. In my book, you will see um, an outline of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an outline so that you can see it and you can create your own. It's really easy just to make a copy of this on Microsoft Word.
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a picture of this so that you can see this. And basically what you want to do is you want to write down, right here I say, what are you committed to accomplishing today? And just write down your things right there. So as you wake up, you're like, okay, the first thing I need to do is this. And the second thing I need to do is that. And the third thing I need to do is that. Whether you're a morning or night person, like I would probably relate myself to being more of a night person. However, waking up full of energy and knowing what your goals are for today, it doesn't matter if you're a day or a night person, you will have more energy to get those goals done. Okay guys, so I just want to reiterate, please pick up a copy of the book. Um, I'm just so in love with this book. And in this book I just share so many stories that you know I went through. And um, I also have stories from nursing students that were nursing students at the time. I'm sure they're nurses now. And I have um, tips from professors, 25 different professors from all over the United States. And I think that you'll really find it helpful. It's available almost in every country. If it's not available in your country, let me know because I can probably figure out a way to get it to you. But um, anyways, I hope you love it and I hope you love this program. So anyways, I wish you much success and I'm looking forward to reading your success stories. If you want to email me your success story to caroline at empowering.com, I cannot wait to read it. All right, I love you guys, and I hope that you ace nursing school and become a very successful and very happy nurse. I love you guys. Bye.